The Treasury Chief of the United States warned that the country is still at risk of an economic downturn, saying that it is not off the table or cannot be ruled out yet, hence Marshall reports. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen warned that the United States is not yet out of the possibility of an economic recession. Yellen, in an interview with an American broadcast network, said it's appropriate and normal for growth to be moderate. Just recently, according to a report, the economy only added 209,000 jobs in June, the weakest since December 2020. The unemployment rate slightly decreased from 3.7% in May to 3.6% in the same month. However, the added jobs were fewer than in previous months. Meanwhile, even though it began to ease, inflation was still high after prices rose 4% year-over-year in May. This is still double from the 2% target of the U.S. Federal Reserve. Taking this into account, Yellen pointed out that the inflation is too high and did not rule out a potential recession. In a statement, she said, We have a healthy economy, a great labor market, inflation too high, and a concern of ours and the American people, but coming down over time. Last week, the central bank also warned that a recession this year is quite likely, but probably won't be deep or prolonged. Meanwhile, the Bank of America on Tuesday agreed to pay 250 million U.S. dollars in fines, as well as compensation to settle claims that it systematically double-charged customers' fees. The bank also reportedly withheld promised credit card perks and open accounts without the authorization of customers. The said bank agreed to pay 100 million U.S. dollars in restitution to harmed consumers. Another 150 million U.S. dollars will be paid for civil penalties after the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and so Office of the Controller of the Currency said Bank of America violated numerous laws starting in 2012. This is Hans Marshall reporting. SMNR News. In other news, President Vladimir Zelensky had a more conciliatory tone on the second day of the summit. And this is after he criticized NATO leaders for not providing his country with a clear timeline for a membership in the alliance, saying that it is unprecedented and absurd. Carlo de la Peña tells us more. Zelensky has accused NATO of not showing enough respect for its unwillingness for the immediate membership for Ukraine. The Ukrainian president made the remarks as NATO kicked off its summit in Vilnius, Lithuania, citing signals he had received which indicated that Ukraine would not be given an invitation of any sort to join NATO. In a statement on social media, Zelensky said, end quote, We value our allies. We value our shared security and we always appreciate an open conversation. Ukraine will be represented at the NATO summit in Vilnius because it is about respect, but Ukraine also deserves respect. It's unprecedented and observed when a time frame is not set neither for the invitation nor for Ukraine's membership, while at the same time vague wording about conditions is added even for inviting Ukraine." End of quote. Zelensky also claimed that NATO's indecisiveness was a sign of the bloc's weakness. Reports citing the most recent version of NATO's draft communic states that it will be in a position to extend an invitation to Ukraine when allies agree and conditions are met. However, Zelensky hits out at NATO for its seemingly unreadiness to neither invite the country to the alliance nor to make it a member of it. According to the Ukrainian president, this means that a window of opportunity is being left to bargain Ukraine's membership in NATO in negotiations with Russia. The Ukrainian president's remarks did not go unnoticed by NATO, with a political report citing an unnamed senior diplomat from Central Europe saying that Zelensky was going too far and that such remarks is not a thoughtful and fair approach from him. U.S. Republican Senator Rand Paul also criticized Zelensky, saying that the Ukrainian president might need to recalibrate his complaints to avoid alienating his Western allies. Paul said, end quote, We've given them $100 billion, and he has the audacity to be brazen as to tell us we'd better speed it up? I'd say that's audacious. I'd say it's brazen, and it's not very grateful for the $100 billion that we've given him so far. End of quote. 
Meanwhile, NATO has reaffirmed its readiness to give Ukraine membership at some point in the future, but it will be allowed to bypass the bloc's Membership Action Plan, or MAP, which is usually required for candidate members. NATO statement read, end quote. We reaffirm the commitment we made at the 2008 summit in Bucharest that Ukraine will become a member of NATO. And today, we recognize that Ukraine's path to full Euro-Atlantic integration has moved beyond the need for the membership action plan. End of quote. NATO said Ukraine has become increasingly interoperable and politically integrated with the U.S.-led bloc, but outlined Ukraine's need for more democratic and security sectoral reforms. It can be remembered that NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said that NATO must first ensure that Ukraine achieves a victory in its fight with Russia. However, the NATO chief warned that if Ukraine did not succeed, then its membership in the alliance will be out of the question. Reporting, this has been Carla de la Peña, SMNI. Prime Minister Hun Sen reiterated his appeal against using forbidden weapons of war by urging NATO member states to oppose America's plan to provide cluster bombs to Ukraine. Sandy Abuela reports. As the two-day North Atlantic Treaty Organization kicked off in Lithuania, Cambodia Prime Minister Hun Sen urged NATO and the U.S. allies to dissuade U.S. in its plan to send cluster munitions to Ukraine. Prime Minister Hun Sen opposed America's plan to send deadly cluster bombs to Ukraine in the fight against Russia. Following the announcement of U.S. transfer of $800 million worth of cluster munitions to Ukraine, Hussein urged member states to oppose this plan. In a tweet, he said, quote, On behalf of the head of the royal government of Cambodia, I would like to continue to call on NATO member states and some U.S. allies, including the United Kingdom, Spain, Germany, and Canada, all of which are signatories to the Convention of the Prohibition of the Cluster Munitions, to take responsibility and participate in preventing U.S. President Joe Biden and the President of Ukraine not to use this deadly weapon. I know for sure that Cambodia is small and weak, but out of compassion for the people of Ukraine, I call on the President of the United States, the donors, and the President of Ukraine, the recipient, to refrain from using cluster munitions in this war, because the real victims are the Ukrainian people. End of quote. The Cambodian Prime Minister said that the pain of the country in the 1970s, in which U.S. dropped cluster bombs, is still felt after more than 50 years ago and completely not yet been eradicated. Meanwhile, Natalia Shinkina, the Deputy Head of Mission and Political Counselor of the Embassy of Ukraine in Vietnam, said that the Ukraine understand the concerns of Prime Minister Hun Sen, but likely said that there are not so many options apart from using the cluster munitions. Shinkina said, and the need of these cluster bombs was seriously taken after weighing carefully and confirmed that the specified munition at this stage of repelling Russians meets the most urgent needs of Ukrainian forces. The U.S. will send cluster munitions to Ukraine as part of a new military aid package. President Joe Biden in an interview said that they've run out of ammo, that's why they have decided to provide such weapons. Meanwhile, the Cambodian Mine Action Center conducted a training on the use of lineman detection equipment for the State Emergency Service of Ukraine. The equipment used in the training was developed in Japan and is expected to improve through the use of radar that can determine the shapes of the mine even if it's still buried. This training was the result of the joint commitment between Prime Minister Hun Sen, the Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Cambodia, and Prime Minister Kishida Fumio of Japan in their bilateral meeting during the 2022 ASEAN summits and other related summits in Cambodia. Rika Prichinumpen, Sandy Abuela, SM9 News, Cambodia.